Good morning, families and students. Welcome back for another day of At Home with APS. This is the K-1 hour. I just wanted to let you know that at the end of this hour, starting our second hour at 9 o'clock, we will have our Fun Friday activity, and we will have a special drum circle. So make sure you stay tuned in today um, after our lesson to watch the drum circle. Now, I'm here to teach first grade phonics. Those of you that were with, here, with me earlier this week, we talked about the magic E spelling pattern. We're gonna transition away from that just a little bit to review some consonant blends. Now, this is something you probably already learned about in school. So like I said, I'm just here to review it with you um, and give you some games that you can play at home to practice your blends. So I thought we would start with a warm-up game today, and I'm going to invite my friends Miss Maggie and Miss Q to play with me today. So they're going to come join me on stage. And this is a game that you might be familiar with. Have you guys ever played Simon Says? They have. Okay, great. Now this is Simon Says, but it's going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to say the actual word. You have to try to guess my action. When I stretch the word apart, they need to blend it back together. So let's see how they do. Ready? Simon Says, J, A, M, P. They got it. Jump. Okay. Simon Says, B, E, N, D. Your legs. Did they get it? I think so. They're both still in. Okay. Blink your eyes. Uh-oh. Miss Maggie blinked her eyes, but Simon didn't say. So she would be out, but we're going to let you keep playing. <laughs> okay. Simon says, sk to the wall. They got it. Skipping. Okay. Simon says, full a p your arms. They got it. Flap. Okay. St a m p your feet. They got it. Simon didn't say. What was the word, though? Stomp. Very good. Okay. Um, Simon says, take Four st -e -p -s. They got it. They took four steps. Okay, last one, because you guys are so good at this game. Dr -a -p your head. <gasps> Miss Maggie, she didn't quite get it. Drop your head. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much for playing with me today, friends. <laughs> So students at home, this is a game that you could play with some of your family members. You can take words and just practice stretching them out and listening to blend them back together. It's just another version of Simon Says. Now, that game was fun, but it also had a purpose. All of my words had blends in them. So let's review what is a consonant blend. I'm going to use sticky notes to show you the spelling pattern for our consonant blends, and then we'll practice building a few words. So blends are when we have two consonants side by side. I'm writing the letter C to stand for consonant, and V stands for vowel. So this is a spelling pattern for blends. Consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant. And we warmed up with that Simon Says game today so that we can practice building some of those words from our game. For example, the first thing I had, one of the things I had my friends do was sk -ip. skip. Let's try building that word. When I build words, I like to tap them out first. Sk, I, p, s. What says s? S. OK. 
Okay, next comes k. What says k? That one can be tricky because both c and k make that sound. But in this word, it's a k. Vowel says I. I. Very good. One more sound. Sk. I. P. What consonant says P? P. Sk. I. P. Skip. So you can see that my sticky notes match the color of my tiles. We have a consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant. And we call this a blend because the sounds S and K, we can pull them apart to say S K. Or we can blend them together and say S K. So as you become a stronger reader, I hope that you'll begin to blend some sounds. Let's try another one. S K. I, P. Okay, I'm thinking back to our game, and something else I had my friends do was flap their arms. You can help me build this one, okay? Think about how I'm going to spell this word, and you can check your answer with me. Again, I'm going to tap it out first before I build it. F, U, A, P, flap. F, U, Ah, p, flap. That's another beginning blend. It comes at the beginning of my word. Let's spell that one back. F, L, A, P. Now, blends don't always come at the beginning of the word. Sometimes they come at the end. So that spelling pattern would just look like this. Consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant. I'll show you another example from our game. I had my friends j, a, m, p, jump. Let's tap that word out and see if we can find an ending blend here. J, what says j? J, j, a. J, uh, mm. P. It was the last sound. Let's try reading it. J, uh, mm. P. Jump. Very good. So now you can see my blend is at the end of the word. This made me think back to our lesson on Monday when we practiced our glued sounds. Do you remember those A-N-G and A-N-K sounds? All of those glued sounds have ending blends, where there's two consonants at the end. J-U-M-P. OK, let's try one more with an ending blend. Ready? Bend. B-E-N-D. Think about how many sounds you heard there. B, 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 E, E, B, E, N, B, E, N, D, D. Bend. Again, I've got my ending blend there. N, D. Are you starting to remember some of this from school? I hope so. Now, I want to think back to our magic word from Wednesday. I've got it here with our markings when we were talking about magic E. And remember, our word was brave. We were thinking about all of the brave people in our world and in our community. And we also practiced how to mark that word to help us identify the magic E. Now, this word is special for another reason. At the beginning, I see two consonants, B, R. 
I know that when two consonants are side by side, that's called a blend. So this word has a blend and magic E. When you find a blend on a piece of paper that you can write on, you can help yourself remember to blend those sounds by just underlining each individual letter, like this. So as I read, then I can remember, I could pull those sounds apart to say b, er, or I can just blend them, ber, and that will help me read a little bit more fluently. So if you saved this word from Wednesday, you can go ahead and mark it just like I did. Now, I have another game for you today that I thought you could play at home to continue practicing your blends. So for this game, you'll need just a blank piece of paper that you could either rip or cut into smaller pieces and a writing utensil. Pencil, marker, crayon, whatever you feel like using today. So while you're getting those set up, I'm going to pull my chart closer to me so that you can see this too. And remember, we have all of our videos on YouTube. So if you miss an instruction while you're getting your materials, you can always go back and watch on YouTube. But you can see I wrote some blends behind me. And don't worry, I'll show you them on up close as well. But for this game, we're just going to write down some beginning blends. So I started with the blend from our word brave, and I wrote down the letters B, R. You can do the same on a piece of paper. And then I chose the blend B, L. So I wrote that on another card. And again, you can do the same. And then I thought about some S blends that I hear when I'm reading. I wrote down SL, SU, I also wrote down SP. And then I wrote down ST, st. And my last one, I thought about a T blend, because I was thinking about some of our lessons from last week about trees. And so I wrote down the blend TR, tur. Now, you could do this with any blends. These are just the ones that I thought would be good to start with and that you might be familiar with. After I wrote down the blends on my card, I'm going to just put them in a basket or a bag, or you could put them face down, whatever works for you. Now, this is a scavenger hunt game around your house to get your ears trained for finding words with blends. So I'm going to draw a blend out, and I got the blend B. L, bull. Now, I want to go around my house and find words that start with the sound bull. And I did this already. I was thinking about playing this game at my house, and I thought it was so fun. And every morning when I come here to film, I always grab my coffee mug, and I noticed it's black, b o ack. That has the beginning blend bull. So that was one object I found. Then I was also searching, and as I got this game ready, I found a blank piece of paper. Blank starts with the beginning sound bull. And every day, I have to take my dogs on a walk, or they get a little bit crazy. And so I was looking at my dog's collar that I use when we go on walks, and I noticed that it's blue. 
Blue has the beginning sound, blue. So I'm going to add that to my pile too. And I like puzzles. And so I found this Rubik's Cube at my house that I was working on. And I thought of an, about another name for this. And you might have something better, but I thought that I could call this a block. And block has the beginning sound, bull. So I found four objects in my house with the sound bull. Let's try another one. Now I pulled the card sp. I'm going to go looking around my house for things that have the sound sp. And the very first thing I thought of was when Miss Q did her lesson on spoons. Spoon has the beginning sound sp. So I can add that to my pile. And I was also thinking about how much I love to play music, and I found a speaker. Speaker has the beginning sound sp. So I added that to my pile, too. And then I thought about something that I hope you don't find in your house, but you might, because I know that happens to me sometimes. But this one I drew a picture of because I didn't want to bring it with me. It's a spider. Spider has the beginning sound sp. So I added that to my pile. And then I thought about how much I love cooking. So I went searching around my kitchen and I found some spices. Spices has the same blend. So I can add that to my SP pile. And then the last thing I found was a spray bottle. Maybe you have cleaner in it or water. But spray has the beginning sound sp. So this is a game that you could play by yourself or with a family member. You could maybe make it a competition to see who can find the most words. But you might also notice that I drew some things because I couldn't find a spider in my house. So that's a way that you could change this game. If you are having trouble finding something or you just can't find the thing that you want, as you draw a card, you could also draw all the things that have that beginning sound. And like I said, I got you started with some beginning blends today. But as you get better at this game, you can change what blends are in your bag. You can put ending blends in there. I'm thinking about our word bend, the ND sound. So if you have a grown-up or a sibling in the house, you could ask them to help you come up with some other blends to add to your bag. And then, as you get really good, you can challenge yourself a little bit. And you could draw a card and write all of the words that have that sound in it. So there's lots of ways that you can change that game. I'm going to put my things away so that we can do the last part of our lesson today, which is going to be our sight words. So on Wednesday, we made a sight word booklet. And I still haven't decorated my cover. But on the inside, were our words from a couple weeks ago, as well as our words from this week. And remember, sight words are words that you want to know automatically. You shouldn't sound them out. We want you to recognize them immediately. So in order for that to happen, we have to practice those words a lot. You have to see them, and you have to practice writing them. So let's go through our sight word routine. First, we're going to read the word. Can you remember what this word is? It's friend. Great. This is such a good word to know. And in the word friend, I see a blend at the beginning, F-R, fur. Let's go ahead and skywrite this word. So when you skywrite, remember, you want your arm nice and straight, 
and you want to make really big motions with your arm. Ready? F. R. I. E. N. D. Great. Do you remember what this word was? Friend. Can you think of a sentence using the word friend? Maybe you thought about somebody who is your friend. I thought about my friend likes to play. Okay, let's do our next word. Do you remember this word? Other. Very good. Let's get our sky writing arms out nice and straight. O. T. H. E. R. Good. That word was other. Now, can you think of a sentence using the word other? I thought about the word friend again. And my other friend also likes to play. Maybe you thought of a different sentence. Now, our last word, sight word this week, remember, has the word other in it. Right? They have the same letters, but then we add on two sounds at the beginning to make the word another. Can you say another? Great. Let's skywrite it. Get your arm out nice and straight. A. N. O. T. H. E. R. Great job. That word was another. Can you think about a sentence using the word another? The other day we talked about, in the, we found this word in a sentence and it was, can I please have another cookie? So that was the sentence I thought about. Now, we have enough time that we can practice writing our sight words together. So if you're doing this with me at home, again, you might just have a blank piece of paper or anything that you can find to write on. And I'm going to do it up close for you today so you can see what it might look like on a smaller piece of paper that you could hang up in your house. So when I'm, I'm going to do this in marker so you can see. When I practice writing my words, since I don't have handwriting paper here, I just make my own. And you could use a straight edge, like a blank piece of paper, to help you draw your lines, or just do your very best. So I drew two straight lines, and I'm going to do dotted lines in the middle. That way, I can practice forming my letters correctly, which is what our sky writing helped us to do. I'm going to write the word friend. And if you made your sight word booklet with me, you could maybe keep that open while you're writing your word. I'm going to hold it up for you so you can copy it down. F. R. I. E, N, D. And there's my word friend. Now, notice I did that kind of small. Your job is to make two more handwriting lines and write your other words today. I'll be seeing you again next week. 
But Miss Maggie and Miss Q are up next for your reading lesson. Thanks for joining me. Good morning, learners, and welcome back. Today I'm going to read a book to you called Journey. This book is written and illustrated by Aaron Becker, and it's published by Candlewick Books. Now, journey. What is a journey? Hmm. Sometimes it's if you travel somewhere, you can go on a journey. Sometimes it's like an adventure. If you've ever dreamt of something and then planned it out and gone on that adventure, that could be a journey. It could be something that you're even unaware of. Maybe you went on a walk through the, through the woods and ended up being a journey because you had places that you stopped along the way and things that you saw or wanted to learn more about. All of those ideas can be a journey. Today, this book is very special because this book has no words. It's only about pictures. Sometimes when you look at pictures in a book, it's gonna make you have a feeling inside. It's gonna make you think about something or remember something that relates to the picture that you're seeing. So while this book has no words in it, it's for sure going to tell us a story and it's definitely going to help us to have some feelings. Some of those feelings might be good feelings. Some of those feelings might be sad feelings. But at the end, we're going to have some new ideas for a journey that we can take. So this book, Journey, by Aaron Becker. It starts on the very first page which is the title page. The picture in this is also important. The illustrator of this book uses dark colors or grays, but there are some pictures that have a color in them. I wonder why he chose to do that. So here is a picture of a little girl on her scooter. The scooter is red, so that must be part of her journey. I also see up here a blue cage. It might be a lantern. It might be showing her the path for her journey. I wonder where she'll go. Here she is. Here's the first page of the book. You can see the red scooter. You can see the people in the house. And a purple marker over here. There's not really any other colors. And when I look at her sitting on this step, it makes me wonder why she's sad. What does it make you think of? What does it make you wonder? The next two pages of this book show three different pictures Here's the red scooter again. Here's a red kite. And here's a red ball. I wonder what she's wanting. I wonder what her feelings are. And here's the next page. She's alone in her room, but I see a cat. I see a map and a balloon flying above. What does this picture make you feel or wonder or think about?
this is almost the same picture, but something turned red. It looks like a marker or a crayon on her floor. I wonder if she got an idea because over here, she starts to draw. She draws a door and the door opens up and she goes through. Where do you think she'll go? Oh, I see a lot more color now. It looks like she's in a forest and the lanterns are still guiding her path. Her door is still red. She's holding that crayon. I think her journey has just began. What do you think? Off she goes into the woods. She is very brave. We learned that word. I see her starting to draw with her red marker and she drew a boat. Do you think the boat could be its own journey? Do you think the boat could take her on an adventure? I wonder where she'll go. Whoa. Here's her boat coming in. It looks like a castle or a city. I know she's here in her red boat, but I wonder where she'll go next. It looks like she's coming into the city and she's seeing some people. They're waving at her. Hello. But I also see it coming to an end. I wonder what she'll do next. The boat came to an end and she quickly starts to draw something so that she doesn't go down the waterfall. I wonder what that feeling is. She maybe was excited to go down the waterfall and maybe she was scared. So you see her falling through the sky. She starts to draw a circle. I wonder what the circle could be. <gasps> it's that balloon. It's that same balloon from her bedroom. She took off in that hot air balloon up into the clouds. Have you seen a balloon in the clouds? If you're from Albuquerque like us, I'm sure you've seen balloons up in the clouds. I wonder where she'll go next. This is such an adventure of a journey that she's on. All the people are waving goodbye. Here she comes up to some other balloons in the sky. And now I also see a purple bird. Do you remember the other page where we saw purple? What was it that was purple? The red balloon continues to float through it looks like another 
air machine. I don't know if it's an airplane. It's not really a helicopter. It's kind of like a floating boat. She gets off. What would that be like if you got off on an interesting thing flying through the sky and you don't know where it is or you don't know where it's going? What would you feel? Is it exciting? Are you worried? She climbs up a ladder and she comes to see that purple bird again. But this time, the bird is in a cage. That makes me think, poor bird. He was flying free and now he's in a cage. I wonder what she'll do. Mm. She grabbed that purple bird and the guards don't know what to do. And she starts to run. She's running at the end of the line. What does she do? She frees the bird. She must have been worried for that bird as well. I think she might be kind to release the bird back to fly in the sky. But here come the guards. And you can see more guards in this ship. They grabbed her and she lost her red crayon, which is what was giving her her journey. Oh no, that makes me worry. And they put her in a cage all alone. I wonder how she'll escape. The bird came back and he brought her crayon So the bird remembered who saved it. And together they start to draw. It looks like a red square. What could be a red square? So many choices. Whoa. She drew a magic carpet. And now she can fly with the bird. I wonder what she's feeling now. How exciting. Would you want to fly on a magic carpet with a bird? What a grand journey that would be. They're flying over the ocean into the stars. She found her door. She opens the door and climbs through. Do you think the purple door will take her home? or on another adventure. She brought her red crayon and she found the person who drew with, who drew with the purple crayon, the bird that saved her. It looks like they became friends and started to draw something together, purple and red with two circles. What could they be drawing?
they drew a bike to ride together. So she's not alone anymore. How exciting and fun. And the bird is still with them too. I wonder where their journey will take them next. While this is the end of this book, so many more adventures for you to think about drawing. What did that make you feel, that story? Did it make you feel silly? Did it make you feel angry? Maybe angry for the bird? Did it make you feel sad? Or maybe happy? Happy that she found a friend. She's not alone anymore. Maybe it made you feel loved. There are so many different feelings that you can feel when you look at pictures within a book. Hopefully today you can go and draw some pictures and create your own journey and think about where you will go in your own adventure book. There don't have to be any words. But remember that pictures make you feel something. So draw something that whoever's reading your book can also feel. Hopefully your adventure will be grand and Miss Maggie's gonna help you continue that thinking. Thank you for joining today with At Home with APS and up next is Maggie to continue our journey. Have a great day. Good morning, literacy learners. This is Miss Maggie. Miss Q just read us a wonderful visual story about the imagination a little girl had and the journey she took throughout her imagination. We're going to use that story today to create our own map of our own visual journey. In this book, Journey, the little girl traveled to so many different amazing places. It was absolutely incredible and breathtaking what she could think of. We'll do the same thing today, but with your imagination as well. For this activity, you are going to want your own piece of paper, some coloring utensils like crayons, colored pencils, or markers. And if you would like, there will be some directional cards available on the APS website that you could use as well. First, let's talk about what is a map. Can you say map? That's right. That's how you say map. A map is a drawing or an image of an area. It has lots of different features and different places. And it shows sometimes the directions of those places. Oftentimes when we talk about maps, we talk about the different directions in going from place to place on that map. Some examples might be with some of the cards that we have on this paper. For example, over. Can you say over? That means we go over something or above it. Here's another example. Far. We might say something is far away. Can you say far? That's right. So there are many different directional words that we can use to describe maps. We're going to take a look into our own imagination today and create our own visual map, just like the little girl did. I want you to think of some places that the little girl went to in this story. Think for just a moment.
Did you think of one? I know I did. I thought about, let me turn to the page for you. I thought about the beautiful forest that the little girl visited. That can be one place on my map. This is just an example. You can choose your own places to go on your map. I'm going to draw the forest as one of the locations or places on my map. I'll start over here. Going to draw some nice, big, leafy trees. Make some lines for the trunk. That's one place I can go for my visual map. Let's think of another place. Where else did our character go in the story? Hmm. Let me show you the page of another location this girl went to. That's right, she went to a castle. I'm going to draw a castle on my visual map. I'll draw a couple of lines. A nice big bridge. That's my castle. Hmm, how would I describe this on a map? Going from the forest to the castle. I'm going to use my direction cards to help me. From the forest, I can travel up to the castle. Or I might say, the castle is above. Let's see, do I have the word above? Yes, I do. Here it is. The castle is above the trees on my map. Let's think, where else did the little girl go in the story? Hmm. That's right. She also traveled in a hot air balloon. I think I'll draw a hot air balloon. Nice big circle, a triangle, and lines for her basket. How might I talk about the hot air balloon on my map? Hmm. I could say the hot air balloon is next to the castle. That's how I can use some directional words. Remember, we're using events from the story to create an example of a map. You can make your own 
with your own imagination at home. Where else did the girl go in the story? Hmm. Oh, that's right. She went to a flying vehicle in the sky and got trapped in a cage. Hmm. I'm going to draw that as well. Going to make a little shape. I'm going to add some wings with a triangle and then a little cage. How might I describe this, the ship, on my map, this flying vehicle. Hmm. I know I might say the flying vehicle is below the hot air balloon. Where else did the girl go in our story? Hmm. Oh, that's right. She flew on a red carpet. I'm going to go ahead and draw that red carpet on my map as one of my locations. I'll draw a rectangle with a couple of lines here. How might I describe this location on my map? Hmm. I know I can say the red carpet is at the bottom of my map. That's another way that I could describe my visual map in my imagination. I use the book Journey as an example, but you can make your own with all different kinds of places. Some might be real, some might be completely imaginary. It's up to you. So for this, as an extension, after you draw your map, you can cut out the pictures on your map, put them up in your house, and with your family, you could travel through your map in your home on an exploratory adventure. You could have so much fun together traveling to the different places on your map. These directional cards will be available on the APS website. Today, we explored and played some fun games with Miss Rachel, with phonics. Miss Q read us a wonderful visual story, and we explored how to make our own visual maps using direction cards and everything as simple as paper, and coloring utensils. We look forward to exploring many more fun topics with you for these remaining weeks. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of At Home with APS. We'll see you soon.